Welcome back to Pips and Chits, where today is part one of a three-part unboxing series. Munchkin Dungeon promises to be a hilarious adventure game designed by Andrea Cheravasio, and I apologize if I butcher that name, and Eric Lang, with art by John Kovalik and published by Simon Games. It is designed for two to five players who will explore a dungeon and have to push their luck facing not only hordes of monsters, but also their friends' treacherous tricks. It is for ages 14 and up and promises to have a playing time of 60 to 90 minutes. However, I would suspect that's going to go up a little bit once you add in some of the expansions. It is a light to medium weight game, so it should be easier for beginners and casual gamers and currently sits at a ranking of 7 out of 10 on BGG. Munchkin Dungeon and its expansions here are based on the original Munchkin card game designed by Steve Jackson Games. The original game spawned numerous expansions and themed spin-offs covering a host of various genres and IPs. Personally, the Munchkin card game is one of the very first uh, tabletop games I ever purchased and also is one of my favorite ones. I only wish I could get it to the table a little bit more often and convince my gaming group to play it, but I'm hoping with this uh, board game that it will breathe a new life into the Munchkin franchise for at least for my gaming group. And I'm hoping that with the quirky and humorous miniatures that we're going to see here in a few minutes, that should accomplish that. Anyway, before I go ahead and get into the unboxing, I want to tell you a little bit about the original Kickstarter campaign. It began in late January 2019 and had a goal of $200,000. Well, uh, it garnered over just over $700,000 in pledges with 6,444 backers. And even though it was originally supposed to deliver in February of uh, this year, 2020, the games actually didn't start arriving at doorsteps until, you know, late or early uh, April, I believe. And actually, I just got mine today, which happens to be the second day of June. Anyway, there's a lot to this pledge here. I was almost an all-in uh, backer with, uh, I think I, I added quite a few of the add-ons, not all of them, about 90% of them. But because of the uh, a sheer amount of content here, I went ahead and decided to go ahead and break this up into three separate videos. So today, I'm going to just open up this core box here and the Epic Playboard, which was an add-on for $12 and the Legendary Pack as well. Now, the Legendary Pack uh, contains two oversized dice and 36 additional uh, treasure cards or loot cards, whatever you want to call them. There were some other dice packs as well. I think, I believe that there was three additional dice packs ranging anywhere from 10 to $12, but I opted not to go ahead and get these because they were more aesthetic in nature than added to the actual gameplay. In part two of this series, I will unbox the Box of Holding, which I believe is only Kickstarter exclusive content, not available for retail. However, don't quote me on that. I'm not 100% sure, uh, as they have made uh, exclusive content available at conventions and late pledges in the past. And I will also unbox the Side Quest expansion. And then finally, in video number three of this series, I will open up the Bored, Silly, and Cute as a Button expansions, as well as show you the Kickstarter bookmark uh, stretch goals and the Crawling Hand figure. So without further ado, let's get into unboxing. All right, let's get right into it. Uh, first thing I'm going to go ahead and do is just take off the cellophane here just so it gets uh, rid of the, the glare from the camera. We'll go ahead and take a look at the box more in detail. Uh, classic Munchkin uh, iconography here. Or the artwork style should be pretty reminiscent of the original card game. Uh, you know, again, the art done by Koblek. Uh, pretty famous for his uh, drawings here. We have the Steve Jackson logo down here in the uh, corner. And, of course, the Simon uh, logo as well. As you can see, it's pretty thick. It's a big box here. Uh, art on all sides. We'll go ahead and turn it over here, and we'll read a little bit on the back of what the components in here are. We have 
two Super Munchkin figures, two Super Munchkin dashboards, five hero figures, five hero dashboards, five counter bases, ten roaming monster figures, two boss figures, one dungeon board, uh, and speaking of which, I'll be uh, opening up a little bit later here the epic dungeon board in a few minutes. Uh, we have six fight dice, ten monster room cards, six boss room cards, twelve empty room cards, and sixty loot cards. Uh, continuing on with cards, we have uh, sixty threat cards, sixty-two coin tokens, sixteen threat tokens, twelve potion tokens, 35 damage tokens, 18 shame tokens, uh, 5 fame trackers, and 5 level trackers. And again, uh, 2 to 5 players, ages 14 and up, and 60 to 90 minutes. And let's go ahead and slide off the top here. Okay, move the box off to the side. And looks like here in our first bag, uh, it's a zip lock bag. And we have, looks like, let's see here, we have our Play More Munchkin. Uh, kind of, you heard me talk about this earlier here, all the different IPs and re-theming of this game or the original card game here. Kind of a neat little insert, all the different uh, Twitter handle, Facebook, Instagram, and Kickstarter things for Steve Jackson Games. Go visit them. Looks like we have our first set of punch boards here. Uh, all tokens, looks like money and threat. We have some uh, level tokens here, double-sided. Pretty bright colors. We have uh, ones which are a little bit smaller. The threes are a little bit bigger. We have these skull tokens right here. Okay, we'll move that off to the side. And I'm assuming, well, potion tokens and I'm assuming health or damage tokens here. Cute little bandages on the hearts. I'm assuming these might be shame tokens with the bag over the head. That's kind of funny. We have uh, five stars, I imagine, up for the five players. Again, double-sided here. And let's see what else is in the bag. Uh, this is probably the rule book. Yes, it looks like it. So we have a full-color rule book in English. And it is, how many pages do we have here? It's 12 pages from front to back. We have a rule summary here on page 12, of, uh, which is the back. See the first couple pages, we were just talking about uh, the basic concepts, all the different components that we see in the game. Uh, we're talking about the dungeon board, the room cards. Uh, what else do we have? A threat cards down here. How to set up the game. This is on page six. And we have the goal of the game, and gameplay actually starts on page seven. So uh, all in all, it doesn't seem like a lot of rules on here. If the, you know, the rules end on page 11, we're basically talking gameplay rules are from pages 7, uh, 8, 9, 10, and 11. So we have defeated heroes, defeated monsters, fighting the boss, uh, loot and resting, rewards, uh, end of game scoring here. Looks like we have a little bit of colorful pictures and some examples. So uh, hopefully it's pretty straightforward. I know uh, on Board Game Geek right now, there is uh, version four of the rules. I don't know if that's the actual final one or a pre-production copy. I don't really know what version these are, but you might want to go to the uh, Board Game Geek page just to be safe and download the PDF for the most current set of rules. And this looks like we have the dungeon board, and it's very big, and I can't even fit it into my camera here. So very nice. We have, um, you know, it looks like a tracker here on one side. Let me flip this over. We have a threat pool. We have our boss down here at the furthest part of the dungeon, or the lowest part of the dungeon. We have a monster graveyard. Let me go ahead and open this up if you can see it. Okay, well, 
very colorful. So it looks like we have some green, maybe some beginning monsters here or easier stuff. We have kind of a, a division line here, uh, staircases that go down to multiple paths. This is kind of a yellow area, which I would assume might be intermediate threats or, you know, slightly tougher monsters. And then finally, at the bottom of the board here, I'm going to scoot this up, is we have the red area, which I assume is the more experienced monsters or the harder stuff. And we have our treasure loot here, placeholders here on the side. Pretty nice. And anything, no, nothing on the back side. So just a single-sided board folds up pretty nice. Go ahead and set that off to the side. We have another zip lock bag here. These, I imagine, are the individual player boards. And looks like we have five of them. We have a wizard right here whose powers are thunderstorm and confusion. Or we'll show what his level one is. And I don't, uh, I can't pretend to tell you what this tracker is, but obviously it looks like you go up. You have a place for a weapon and armor. Uh, these are only one-sided. It does say Munchkin Dungeon on the opposite side of it. But that is the wizard. And then here we have the thief, whose powers are target change and pickpocket. And the iconography is a little bit different here. I won't get into that right now. Moving on to the warrior, who's got quick attack and berserk as his powers. And we have the cleric, divine intervention, and uh, friendly blessing. We have a dwarf who has safety first and shield bash. We have Super Munchkin, a female version with a jack of all trades and copyright as their special powers. And we have Super Munchkin, the male version, same thing, jack of all trades and copyright. So right out of, uh, even though you have five, up to five players can play, it looks like we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven player boards all together. So go ahead and set those off to the side. We'll open up this little acetate um, area here first. Looks like we have just your standard uh, rings for the base of miniatures, just to help tell who's uh, what color. Right there, five of those. And here are six dice. Uh, they're engraved dice, some plastic with some recesses in them. We have lightning bolts. We have shields, we have double swords, we have single swords, and we have some blanks on there. Okay, next we have uh, some cards. So let's go ahead and I'll open up these one pack of cards here. These are probably something I'm going to want to sleep. I've got a feeling that um, I'm going to get a lot of play out of Little little curve to them, but hopefully, uh, you know, we'll get them in sleeves and protect them. So we have uh, some locations. It looks like Brawling Tavern. Uh, well, before I get to that, so oh, it looks like monsters here. So we have something called the Bullfrog, Bullrog, which is probably one of the bosses, I think. Um, you know, we have, oh, he's a level three. So we have some uh, stuff here on the backside of the cards that show uh, level three on there. Um, we have the large angry chicken. That's a cute little drawing there. Also, uh, I assume level three. Um, we have Cyclops. I won't go into all these. We'll see some miniatures here in a minute. We have Hippogriff, Net Troll, uh, the Floating Nose, a bunch of different uh, cards here representing uh, different, uh, I guess, minions whatnot. Uh, locations. I think this is what I was trying to point to earlier here. So we have uh, Tournament Hall, Almost a Safe Space, Honest Owls Casino, The Farm Via, The Dead Mall, uh, Troll Bridge, The Brawling Tavern, uh, 
And these are some of these have level two on them. I won't go through all of these here, but let's see. We have event cards, dog pile, hydrant. Uh, that was a good monster card right there. Uh, more event, Andrea the Merciless, Eric the Jerk. That's probably that. All, that could be Eric Lang for all I know. We have a barrel of monkeys monster. They all have different values up here at the top too. So I'm seeing zeros, threes, ones, twos, a bunch of different uh, monsters. Here we have a stick figure, which looks like he might be a level one monster. If you can't defeat this monster, gain one shame token. So it looks like he's got one health and rolls one dice. We have Bigfoot. We have a Ferris Oxide Monster. Just love all the drawings in here. Very cute. I could go through all these one by one, but that would make this video a little long. So we have monsters and locations in this one here. Go ahead and open the second pack. And see what we have in here. Okay, it looks like we have treasure cards. Bunch of different ones with treasure on the back. Oh, a whole mess of them. So, well, it looks like all of them might be treasure cards. So let's flip them over. Yep, yeah, so items, uh, weapons, armor, item, weapon, armor. Just We have different colors here. We have uh, green, red, and uh, blue. Um, you know, again, same art style here. Weapons have, you know, different uh, armor and weapons have different uh, text down below, different values. Some of them don't have any values on here at all, but imagine these are our treasure cards. And now probably what you've all been waiting for is, um, let's go ahead and move this box, take this box out, get to some of the miniatures here. And let's see, how do we, how can I open this? Looks like we're just opening it from the side and slide this out. Wow, okay, there we go. There's probably what you wanted to see here. So it looks like we have our, uh, our characters right here. This is the wizard, and we have our super munchkin male. Very nice. Uh, these should be really fun to paint. They... They have that kind of, obviously, that very cartoony style, so hopefully these are going to be kind of easy to paint. Uh, looks like you could get into a lot of the cracks and crevices with a brush very easily. This is the female super munchkin who's carrying an axe. We have the cleric here that's got uh, her ice cream cone, and I don't know if you can see it on the, uh, see if I can angle this. But uh, she actually has an engraving on the ice cream cone here where you would see like the chocolate covering going down. But still pretty nice. Decent weight to them too. That's one nice thing about Simon. They do make some great miniatures for the most part. Um, you know, we have our thief right there. I imagine this is our warrior, female warrior right there carrying a sword. She's got a spear on her back. And then we have our dwarf here holding uh, his axe and shield. And, okay, here looks like our big boss monsters. Yeah, he's very heavy, all done in uh, red. Well, yeah, these should be relatively easy to paint. This uh, should not be bad. It's going to take a lot of paint to paint these. But, uh, again... A lot of smooth edges here, not a lot of, uh, it's nice to see, I don't see a lot of mold lines, maybe a couple of gaps if you want to get green stuff and put some putty in there to, you know, fill in some of those gaps, but more or less, uh, you know, got that really cartoony detail here and not a lot of hard to reach spaces. We have our dragon right there, cute. Let's see what else do we have here. Oh, look at that. Here's the floating nose. Look at that. Let's see if I can turn it sideways here a little bit. His nose, the nostrils there are, are spilling out pool, uh, pools of snot. See little freckles or pimples on top of the nose. Uh, again, fun, fun to paint to that one. And here is our angry chicken. Very nice. 
Uh, we have our Cyclops wearing his uh, lab jacket, and he's got his little pocket protector right in there. Let's see if I can get a little bit closer to there so you can see that. Pocket protector. We have our flying pig. Cute. And I imagine these are some of the lesser minions. We have what looks to be a leprechaun of some sort. Right there, kind of in a huff, uh, holding, I'm, I'm guessing that's a shillelagh or a club of some sort. We have a turtle guy holding a spear. We have, a, it looks like an accountant holding a briefcase and a ledger of accounts. We have a mouse with a club. And we finally have a, a harp, uh, some kind of female with a harpsichord and angel wings on the back right there. So that looks like that's the majority of the figures or the all the figures for that one. So let's go ahead and uh, mosey on over and I'll switch cameras here really quick and we will open up the Epica game board. Okay, here I have the Epic Game Board here. This was an add-on, um, not part of the original core pledge, but uh, for $12, you can go ahead and get this. Let me go ahead and take the cellophane off of that. And we'll go ahead and open this up. I, quite honestly, I don't even remember what is in here. I think it is basically the game board, which I just showed you in the previous um, video here, but a slightly larger. So I don't know where my blade is. I generally have a blade here by me, which, uh, of course, now I can't find. So I'm just using, using my fingernail here. So let's take this cellophane off. Move that. Yeah, so basically this looks like uh, just a larger, much larger version of the board that I previously shown you. So again, we have our starting part up here. We have a tracker on the left hand side. We have, I guess, our beginning part of the dungeon, which would be this green area, followed by the intermediate area in yellow. Uh, and opening that up. We have, oh, it's actually a lot more. There's a lot more of the red. So not only is it the same board, but it looks like they added one or two areas down here, or at least another two levels here. Uh, we have a final boss. Let's see if I can move this a little bit. Looks like down at the very bottom here, we have an area for two uh, mini bosses and one epic boss, where in the original board, the epic boss or the final boss had a point value of 8. So this one shows a point value of 10. So definitely we've added a couple more areas here. And now there are three monster graveyard spaces as opposed to two. Uh, so it's basically the, an expanded board. And let's see, is it just one-sided? Yeah, it's still one-sided. So it's just a larger and expanded board. Very nice, very thick. Okay, and finally, I'll reset the camera here and we'll get to the last part of the opening. All right, as part of this final portion of this unboxing video, I promised we would go ahead and unbox the legendary pack. This was an add-on, um, not part of the original core game, but something you could purchase for, uh, I believe it was $12, and it gave you uh, 36 more treasure or loot cards and some oversized dice. And these dice are definitely oversized. They are got this really nice yellow marble sheen to them. They are pretty, pretty thick, have a nice heavy clunk to them. And we have a new icon on here. We have this golden goblet. And we have uh, a one blank side. Again, we have a shield, a sword, a goblet on two sides, and a lightning bolt. And both dice are the same. And then we have this pack of cards here. So let's go ahead and open up these cards. 
get my blade here. So we have legendary rules. This legendary pack adds new special equipment for every hero of the Munchkin Dungeon. At the start of the game, you receive the legendary cards designated to your hero class, which can be unlocked once you reach the level marked on every card. For every legendary item you unlock, you get to roll one legendary die during your fights, up to a total of four legendary dice when you reach a level nine. And it um, looks like for the dwarf, he's got the, the big fat hammer. Uh, he's got legendary armor. He's got, uh, well, yeah, the iconography actually is slightly different. So for two lightning bolts here, he gains uh, two potions. For two lightning bolts, he would gain one potion. And then we have um, Legendary Armor add two shield. But this one here, the uh, golden one, uh, has a higher point value here, and you would add three shields. So I won't go through all these, but basically they are, uh, I guess, advanced and superior weapons and armor for each one of the classes that come with the base game. So here's for our Cleric, uh, Cleric Armor. We have Wizard, the, his staff, uh, the Ring of Desummoning, uh, Pointed Skewer for the Halfling, uh, Mithril Armor for the Halfling, a Ranger has a Bow of Tracking, and bow, uh, he also has Plushy Boots, and uh, the Elf has a Repeating Crossbow, and uh, Combat Elven Boots, and then Super Munchkin has a legendary weapon, both for the female and male version of it. So there you go. There are your 36 legendary cards and two oversized dice that come in the uh, Munchkin Dungeon Legendary Pack. I hope you enjoy that. Please come back for parts two and parts three of this unboxing series. Like I said, there's a lot here, and I want to kind of give a uh, fair and equal time to each one of those. So again, this is Jason for Pips and Chits. Go ahead and leave me a comment in the comment section below. I'd like you to go ahead and subscribe to my channel and visit me back sometime. Okay, take care.